Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. If you find that, could you stand one more time for the reading of God's Word? And I will, I will not apologize, but I will tell you in advance that I'm going to lay back my ears a little bit and be Pentecostal this morning. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And now when, it, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Let us pray this morning. God, we come before you. We thank you for your word and its anointing. We ask, Lord, that your word would go forth in in that anointing and destroy and break yokes. In Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. I feel him in this house. The Bible tells us that this is the beginning of the church as we know it. I want you to realize and grab hold of this today. That we would not be here if it was not for Acts chapter 2. There would be no beginning to the church. You with me this morning? Say amen. Without Acts chapter 2 and Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, there is no church. But I want you to realize with me, and, and some of this may sound familiar and easy to you, but I, I want you to realize that they are In an upper room, 120 people, as the previous chapter would tell us, they are in an upper room seeking the promise of a comforter that Jesus said that he would send. Someone that would not only comfort them, but someone that would testify of Jesus. Someone that, as he would say in Acts chapter 1 and 8, that would give you power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. they're, They're in this upper room and... It is the Feast of Pentecost, so Jerusalem is jam-packed full of people. It is a loud, congested place. Imagine New York City or Chicago in rush hour. The noise, the, the clutter, the congestion going on in that city. But there are 120 people in an upper room separated from everyone else seeking what God has for them. The Bible tells us that in in verse 2, that suddenly there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind. I want to preach to you on that this morning. There came a sound. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there came a sound. And I know that A sound and praise and and all this stuff has been preached on multiple times, but I'm just going to preach what the Lord has given me this morning, and I I probably will not keep you long. But I'm going to ask my first group of volunteers to come and get, get into character. You know me, I have to use an illustration. I'm so boring, I need somebody else to help me. So... What what we have is a group of people during a feast, separated and isolated in a room, uh, waiting to get a hold of God, but they've been there 10 days and nothing has happened. And I want you to know that this is what goes on in our world today. Uh, It's probably what is going on in the believers in the upper room in our story, uh, that this man is seeking for something from God, uh, but there are voices and sounds all around him. I want you to know that our world uh, makes a lot of noise. Our world, our culture makes a lot of noise. 
You see, they're telling him, you're alone. You're not good for anything. You cannot accomplish anything. Why are you here? Why do you believe? Why do you believe this word? Why do you say that you're Pentecostal? Why do you say that you believe in a a one true God? Why are you here? Nothing's happening. You hear that? There's so many noises. There's so many noises. Your children, your teenagers uh, grab a phone and they're going through Facebook and you think it's harmless. I want you to know there's a noise going on in their ear. You're not that pretty. You're not that talented. You're not that gifted. You'll never be that. But you know what's crazy is in the adults. I see 40 and 50 year olds that are insecure. And they're supposed to be leaders in the church. But God, what? I can't do that. I'm not capable of that. And you hear the sound of the enemy saying, why are you still doing this? Why do you still come to church? Why do you worship? Why do you raise your hands? Nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. Anybody ever feel this way? I'll be transparent with you. You know, I always have been. This was me last week. Why are you doing this? Nothing's happening. You want to change the city? You want to change the Nathan? Jay, Jay, nothing's happening. So I hear the sounds of the enemy in my ear. You can't escape them. They're on your phone. They're on your TV. They're in your family. They, you, some of you, you go to church with them. I, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I want you to understand I love you this morning. But I want you to know that the world is full of noise. The world is full of distractions. But the Bible says on this day there came a different sound. There came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. You say, what are you getting at this morning? Here's what I'm getting at. We proclaim that we are Pentecostal. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm talking about an experience with the Holy Ghost. And then we say, oh, we have power. We have anointing. But I want you to know that there is a sound that we have lost. There is a sound that has been forgotten in the church. And it is a sound from heaven as of a righty rushing wind that fills the house where we're sitting. And I want you to know that this world hears a lot of sounds. But they need to hear the sound of the Holy Ghost in his church again. There came a sound and pulled them out of 10 days of prayer and fasting with nothing happening. And there came a sound that ushered them into the streets. And the verse 6 says uh, of chapter 2 that it was noised abroad uh, what was going on in the upper room. Uh, I want you to know that there are many sounds out there. uh, But what this world needs uh, is not a political sound. uh, It's not an entertainment sound. uh, It's not a sound uh, of a little, oh, uh, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. Uh, What this world needs uh, is a Pentecostal, uh, full gospel, uh, Holy Ghost and fire filled uh, sound uh, that'll say listen uh, I'm not just saying I have power uh, there's evidence of power uh, I'm not just saying I'm filled uh, but I can see uh, and show you that I'm filled you guys can sit down thank you give my helpers a hand there's a sound there's a sound You see, what's crazy is, is we're in the age where, Brother Larry, this message is not popular because we've become sophisticated. We're accepted. We don't talk about tongues and the Holy Ghost moving because that's not proper. 
We're not sophisticated. What has happened is the enemy has made us domesticated. And listen, I'm not preaching to you Holy Ghost or nothing. These are believers in the upper room. I will tell you this, that that the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is not essential for salvation. Faith in Christ alone through grace is salvation. But I want you to understand is what has happened in the modern day church uh, is that we have preached to our young people uh, that the Holy Ghost experience, uh, yes, it's not essential to salvation, but what we have done, uh, we've dumbed it down so much uh, that we have taught a generation that it's not essential for Christian living. You shouldn't seek for it. Because it's weird. It's out there. I want you to know that it was noised abroad. It was out there. I'm not Pentecostal because I want to be normal. But when I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, things begin to change in my life. I love when people say, well, this is not my personality. I, I just don't do that. You want to know who I was? I'll show you who I was. Sister Becky, you can sit next to you. Thank you. Can you believe that they're acting that way? I can't believe I was born in a home like this. My mom is acting a fool. That was me. I will never, ever, ever act that way. My dad get up, preach, and spit. I will never act that foolish. But then the Holy Ghost came. And listen, I stopped hearing the sound. I stopped hearing the sound of the enemy saying, look at that. Aren't they foolish? No, what I heard was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it poured its out. It poured himself out on me. And he poured himself into me. And now he's pouring himself out of me. And I don't care. And I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. We would not be here if it was not for the Holy Ghost. I want you to hear me this morning. There was a sound that turned the world upside down 2,000 years ago. There needs to be a sound in the Pentecostal church that will turn it upside down again. I'm not ashamed of the sound. I'm not ashamed of the sound. I'm not ashamed of my worship. I may get on somebody's nerves. I may be too loud. I may be too emotional. But I want you to know when I think of Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Church, we've lost the sound. I've had parents come up to me, kid, 19, 20, 21 years old, fix them. Think I'm kidding, I've had it happen. Fix them. And when I dig into it, Blanche, what I realize is that their parents have let them hear a different sound at home than they heard at church. And I'm not trying to dig it, parents. Guys, listen, I'm, the, 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 the person that I'm referring to is not even in this house. Don't even go to this church. Don't worry about it. Stop looking around trying to figure out. I know you're Pentecostal. I know you're nosy. I'm, I'm nosy too. But listen, I want you, everybody looking around. Man, I wonder if it's... Listen, no, no, no. I wouldn't talk about somebody like that. Now listen, I'm not trying to knock on parents. But you see, the sound at church is, oh, we love Jesus, we worship you, but the sound at home is complaining and gossip. And listen, we need to think about what you need to do for college. We need to think about what, listen, there's nothing wrong with planning. But I want you to know the sound that I heard in my home. In the morning when I got up to go to work or got up to go to school, Brother John, the sound was my father speaking in an unknown tongue upstairs where everybody could hear him. Kneeled at a recliner with his face 
down in it, but I could hear the sound. But the sound at night was the same, but it was a different voice. It was my mother. The sound of the Holy Ghost was in my house. And I want you to know, if you want the sound of the Holy Ghost in this house, the sound of the Holy Ghost has got to be in your house. You say, well, I haven't received. Listen, I'm not trying to demean anybody that has never experienced the gift of speaking. That's not what I'm here to do. But they need to hear the sound of anointed praying. Saying, God, I speak blessing over my children. God, I speak peace over my sons and my daughters. God, I believe you're going to do something in my life. God, you're going to do something in my family. God, you're going to use my children. God, you're going to use my church. God, you're going to use my family. God, you're going to save, set free, heal, and deliver. I want you to know that this generation has been full of noise, but it's about time they hear the sound. They need to hear the sound. People say, the gift of the Holy Ghost, I've heard people say it's not for everyone. But if you read in the same chapter in Acts chapter 2, Peter says this promise is for you, your children, and their children, and for as many as are far off. It's for everybody. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this in verse 7, but the manifestation of, 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 the, of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. We're in a society... That has tried to silence the Pentecostal church. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not throwing shade on any other denomination. But I will tell you this, Brother Larry. I'm so sick and tired of Pentecostal saying, we got the power. And nothing happens. We got the shout, but no walls fall down. You say, oh, that sounds so negative. But here's what gives me hope. Not only the fact that His Spirit is available and accessible for everyone today, but I don't know if you watched the news this week. What happened on Friday? The Supreme Court made a decision. They said the states will decide. This is not a federal government issue. We will not take life. It's not for the government to decide. You say, how does that give you hope? It gives me hope because that means heaven's hearing a sound come from the congregation saying, God, we don't want to kill. We don't want to murder. That gives me hope that there's still a sound in this nation. You know what else gives me hope? The fact that the enemy is trying to quench the sound. I want you to understand, we, we got to look at attacks on our personal and spiritual life differently. Do you realize that when the enemy attacks you, what he's doing is validating the call of God on your life? He would not attack you if you were not a threat. But yet we get attacked and I don't understand. God. And he's like, yeah. the enemy just told you that what I've told you is true. Hear me. It's a lot of noise. But the enemy's trying. I've never seen in this nation, I ain't been alive too long, but I've never seen in this nation the blatant attack on the church. Because the enemy realizes that if you silence the sound of the church, then their sound will take over. Do you realize when they tried to silence, silence the sound of Daniel's praying, they put him in the lion's den, but it only validated who his God was. And when the world came with their sound, the three Hebrew boys would not bow because they said, this is not our sound. Listen to me, young, par young, young people, parents alike. This nation needs a sound. And it's not the sounds of a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or, or a Tea Partier or, or a Libertarian. That's not the sound they need to hear. 
They need to hear the sound of Pentecost. There came a sound. Listen, church, what has happened in Pentecost is we've become backward and ashamed. Listen, I I know I'm a big old boy. I'll say it for you, Jeremy. I'm a plus-size preacher. I know I am. I had a battle with a fence at a softball game, and I lost. (laughs) That fence could not take what was put on it. I look like I've been in a motorcycle wreck. I got burns up and down my forearms and a big old bruise on my stomach. I know it don't look pretty to see me jump up now. But it ain't for you. But we get so concerned. What will I look like? It ain't for them. Get over yourself. I don't hoop and holler and worship because I'm here to entertain you. But I'm here to hoop and holler and worship because Jesus set me free. We've become backward. We've become ashamed. We've become domesticated. But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 14 that the evidence of the Holy Spirit, the tongue, is for a sign. Not to the, un- not to the believer, but to the unbeliever. And then he says that prophecy or tongues and interpretation of tongues edifies the church. But you, you go into most Pentecostal services today, you never find it. I'm thankful I'm in a church that even, even two Wednesdays ago we had tongue and interpretation. You won't find that everywhere. People are afraid of that. People will go as far to say that it's of the devil. But I will tell you, if it's of the devil, why has it done so much good? There came a sound. If I could have my second group of volunteers get ready. Just stand there for a moment. I'll tell you to begin to pray here in a moment. These are my volunteers. They're going to pray. And you'll understand why. The Bible tells us this in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. They're dedicating the temple. I never noticed this before, Brother Larry. But there were 120 priests. Day of Pentecost, 120 in the upper room. Dedication of the first temple that Solomon built. There's 120 priests and they're in charge of worship. They got music ready. They got songs ready. They got prayers ready. They got messages ready. And they began to cry out. They began to blast the trumpets. And what happens, Sister Mary, is the Bible says that a cloud descends from heaven. When the sound was heard, there was a cloud that descended from heaven. And it filled the congregation. And it moved into the tabernacle, into the temple. And what began to happen is the priest could not minister because of the glory of God. All because of of the sound. What needs to come back to the church in America is the sound. If you would just close your eyes with me this morning. I'm going to ask my volunteers. We're going to begin to pray for this church. God, in the name of Jesus. God, we believe. Do you hear that? You got your eyes closed this morning. Do you hear that sound? Oh, Jesus, I pray for this church. Do you hear that sound? That's the sound that brings strongholds down. Oh, Holy Ghost and power, come over this church. Come over our children. Come over our grandchildren. 
Oh, come over. Oh, our sons and daughters, let them prophesy. Oh, do you hear that sound? Oh, that's the sound of Pentecost. That's the sound of Holy Ghost-filled believers. Oh, proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming life, speaking good news to you and your family. Oh, oh, Jesus, that's the sound. That's the sound that our children, our nation, our city needs to hear. Oh, God. Oh, pray, church. Pray, church. Oh, that's the sound. That's the sound. Oh, that's the sound. Sister Emma, you can come to the piano. Oh, that's the sound. Keep praying. Press in. Press in. They pressed in for 10 days. Well, nothing's happening. Press in. Oh, there's a sound. There's a sound. There's a sound. Oh, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Everyone stand across this house. Oh, my volunteers, you can sit down. Thank you. Did you hear that sound? I'm not ashamed. Sister Terry, I'm not afraid. I, I, my mind goes back. When, when Brother Cameron had his accident in the softball game last year, Sister Terry began to lay hands on him and speak with tongues. Everybody's eyes got so big. I loved every minute of it. I didn't love the situation I was in, but... She was unashamed. I'm not saying you need to walk down Kroger Isle speaking in tongues, but if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it. You say, is that stuff really for today? I remember a young lady I knew was on the mission field. Didn't speak a lick of Spanish, Brother Evan. She began to pray for someone and the Spirit began to come upon her just like in the day of Pentecost. They were speaking languages that they did not speak. She began to speak to her. That lady came up to her after service. She said, How do you, where did you learn Spanish? And she's talking to her in Spanish. She's like, I don't know what you're saying. She grabbed her interpreter and the lady said, She wants to know where you learned your Spanish. She said, I don't know Spanish. Besides see and know. He said, but you spoke to me in a language that I could understand. And you spoke to the need that was going on in my life. Oh, that's the sound. Church, that's the sound. I'm not afraid of the sound, Brother Brian. Because if it wasn't for the sound in my home, I wouldn't be here today. Young people, if you've never sought for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, listen, I'm not degrading anybody that it's not been. You seek. You press in. God can use you. I'm not trying to belittle anybody. But I want you to know that if the disciples had to have it, to spread the gospel around the world, it should be a necessity for us. We should seek for it. Because I don't know if you remember just a few minutes ago, your children need to hear that sound. I love it. Brother Jeremy, at night, Ava knows that we can't go to bed until she hears the sound of mom or dad pray and I love it even more because she's now daddy can you teach me how to pray that's a sound that's a sound there was a sound when Jericho walls fell There was a sound when Gideon surrounded the Midianites and they smashed those pots, those vessels, and they began to make a loud blast with the trumpet. There was a sound. 
There was a sound when John the Baptist came out of the wilderness saying there's one that comes after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There was a sound and a quaking of the earth when Jesus cried, it is finished. There was a sound. There was a sound in a Roman jail when Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises. There was a sound. There came a sound. And I want you to know, I'm not trying to recreate Pentecost. That's not what I'm trying to do. Because Peter got up on the day of Pentecost and he said, this is that that was prophesied of the prophet Joel. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He poured it out 2,000 years ago and he's never stopped pouring it out. We just have to make up our mind to step into the river. There hasn't been a sound, Brother Matt, for a long time. Our children got more comfortable listening to the world and its music than they feel comfortable in a worship service to lift their hands. It's because we lost the sound. feel comfortable to laugh and to watch garbage on TV I'll just be honest and get into a worship service and not know what to do it's because we've lost the sound we've become ashamed and we've become manipulated and we've become domesticated but no more I leave you with this The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus is going through telling the Apostle John about the churches. And he's writing through John as if he's writing letters to the pastors of these seven churches. And there's one, the Church of Philadelphia. And Brother Larry, you know what he tells them? He says, I have put before you an open door that no man can shut. But you know why he set before them an open door? He said, because you have power and you have not denied my name. But you know what he says to the next church? The church of Laodicea. He said, you're not hot, you're not cold, you're lukewarm. And he said, I put before you a closed door. But he said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. One church has an open door because they have not denied the power and they have not denied the God they serve. But the other church got so used to the routine that God shut the door, but he said, I'm knocking. And he said, any man that gets to the door, he said, and opens it. He said, I will come into him and sup with him or have fellowship with him church what type of church are we going to be a lukewarm that has to strive to get to the door are we going to be a church that's unashamed full of power that will not deny his name hey everyone uh cameron here from ptc ministries i'm so glad that you could join us today uh, for the message here Uh, i hope the message touched you uh, in a personal way and that you can take that and mold that and move it and let it move you in your life and as you can continue your walk with Christ continue your walk with us as well follow us uh, click in the link below in the description there follow us on all of our social media platforms and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe uh, I feel like a youtuber here but don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to uh, stay connected with us um, and thank you for joining us